This is David Heine of Aspect Art. Today we're standing in front of the new Kirokawa addition to the Van Gogh Museum. Inside it is housed the current exhibit, which is the collection of Dr. Gachet. With us today is curator Louis van Tilburg, who's going to tell us some of the unusual aspects of this particular show, one of them being the controversy about the authenticity of one of the paintings. So join us now for the collection of Dr. Gachet. Louis, could you tell me uh, who was Dr. Cachet? Dr. Cachet was, as the word says, a doctor. And he was a friend of uh, artists. He lived in auvergne sur oise and had his practice in Paris and collected over the years many, many paintings from uh, famous artists like Van Gogh and Cezanne and uh, one of Monet and some Guillaume, who is less well known. How did he get involved with the avant-garde art scene of the, uh, France? Uh, well, in Paris, um, uh, he uh, got to know some, um, some, some uh, impressionists and also he had literary friends, so he moved into uh, those kind of uh, uh, circles. And um, he met quite a few of them when they worked in auvergne sur oise which was indeed a kind of artist's village near Paris, a very lovely village where you can see the countryside and where you can hear the birds singing. So a lot of people went there and uh, lived there. So even uh, Daubigny, uh, the, the artist of the, the School of Barbizon, lived there for some time. Now he was a somewhat unusual doctor too. He kind of specialized in uh, unusual uh, practices at that time, didn't he? Yes, he was a doctor. Um, I think he practiced uh, homeopathy and I think he believed in uh, free sex, although we don't know whether he practiced that. Uh, but uh, so he was for his time an advanced kind of doctors with weird ideas, I think. Uh, Van Gogh considered him a bit uh, uh, to be a bit eccentric and probably that's what he was. When he was younger, I believe he also was a practicing artist and then later again? He was a practicing artist, but an, an amateur artist, I think. Uh, so he, uh, he made uh, etchings uh, and he made also some paintings, and a few of them are included in this show. Speaking of this show, now we've included, uh, or you've included, some of uh, his paintings, I believe. And he was involved somehow in, in copying some of these paintings, wasn't he? He and his son? Well, especially his son. Um, uh, the collection also compromises, besides the architects that I named, also, uh, uh, besides the impressionists that I named, also uh, pictures by himself and also by friends of them, and uh, including uh, a certain Blanche de Roos, since he was the daughter of the, the neighbor. And especially, see, she made a lot of watercolors after uh, pictures from the collection, and so did his son, and also etchings after masterworks from the collections do exist. When I looked through the show, I noticed that she was able to enter some of hers in the salon. How did that come about? Uh, I don't know exactly. Yeah, she simply asked whether they wanted to. Uh, she just sent them to the salon and they were accepted. So she was, she was not... Uh, if you look at her uh, watercolors, they're actually quite good. I think they're quite literal and in colors they're not wrong. and They're, they're quite nice uh, to, to look at, I think. Well, we get to the real heart of it. What was his relation to Van Gogh? Well, he... Uh, Van Gogh got in, uh, uh, met uh, Cachet in 1819 when uh, Van Gogh moved to uh, uh, to uh, auvergne sur oise and Cachet was recommended by uh, uh, Camille Pissarro. Um, he, he recommended uh, Cachet as somebody who could take care of Vincent when he was there. So Theo recommended Cachet to, uh, to his brother and then his brother moved to auvergne sur oise and he stayed there for some time. Now, did he continue painting while he was there? Yes, he made a lot of paintings there. And uh, this was his fateful end, wasn't it? Uh, well, uh, the, the end was a fateful one, yes. <laughs> but uh, this is where he died. And yes, he, um, he died in auvergne sur oise uh, So he shot himself in uh, the month of July. And was it uh, my understanding that Dr. Cachet was, in fact, uh, the attendant physician? 
Uh, I think he was there, but um, he was not a practicing artist. So there are stories that he did not help enough, but we have to realize that he was not the practicing doctor in, uh, in Auvers who was. So he had his practice somewhere else, namely in Paris. Among the paintings here, we have a number of uh, Verhoek. In fact, the two paintings behind you have been somewhat controversial in this century. Could you tell us a little about those? Well, it's only the painting which is on this side and not on that side. Um, this painting comes from the Cachet collection and uh, there have been rumours uh, that some pictures from the Cachet collection were fixed. Not, not only this one, but other ones as well. And those rumours came about uh, at the moment when the son of Dr. Cachet donated part of his collection to uh, uh, the French state. Uh, he donated one picture to, uh, to the Vincent van Gogh Foundation and that's this picture. And more or less immediately after he donated it, uh, uh, the, the person who received it thought that it was not genuine. Uh, that was the son of Theo. And since that time, uh, I understand you've done some research. Now that the two are hanging together, they they are similar and dissimilar. Yes. Could you tell us a little about that? Well, the story is that this picture is a copy. Um, um, well, obviously, it, it is a copy after that one, but the problem is, is it a copy more or less made by Van Gogh, and then you would call, wouldn't call it a copy, but a second version? Or um, is it a copy made by a color reproduction? And th that's the story that uh, people tell who do not believe that this picture is an authentic one. They think that it's a picture that's made by Cachet Jr., uh, who was an artist himself, uh, and at least an amateur artist, and made copies after works from the collection. So this one could be, um, according to their story, be, uh, be based on a color reproduction on the other one. Well, in your research, what, is, what have you come to? Um, well, we've done a lot of things. First, we start with the provenance and simply looking whether the story of uh, copying uh, that picture on basis of a color reproduction was possible. So we looked uh, for the f uh, when, when this picture was being documented for the first time. When do we really no learn something about this picture? And it turns out to be that this picture was already in existence in 1903. And that makes the story of uh, Dr. Cachet uh, copying with a color reproduction totally impossible because there were no color reproductions at that time. Uh, even the picture uh, on uh, behind me that one, which is a, a picture which comes from the museum in, uh, in Essen, uh, was not seen at the time because it was still in the collection of Johanna van Gogh Bonger and she did not exhibit it, uh, it at the time. So this picture, already in existence in 1903, cannot be made on basis uh, of, of, uh, of that. Stylistically, it certainly looks like a uh, van Gogh. Uh, are, were there other clues? Yes, we, we um, of course we analyzed some of the pigments. Um, we did take it out of the frame. Uh, the pigments uh, turned out to be all typical, although the picture, I must admit, is a bit different. Uh, I mean, it was already called in 1903 uh, a relatively dark picture by Van Gogh, and indeed it is. But the pictures, uh, the, the pigments used are uh, totally in harmony with what we find in other uh, uh, pictures, paintings by him, and also in harmony with the, the paints that he orders uh, uh, from Theo. Uh, there are some discolorations in it, which might account for the fact that it looks a bit strange, uh, maybe. So this whole part, for instance, on the right side is purple, uh, and the grey in the trees is also discolored. What exactly were they doing copying these paintings? Was it for their own pleasure or what did they do with them? Well, it depends on uh, what you're exactly talking about. There are a few pictures by Cachet uh, Jr. in which he says, uh, I mean, they're signed and all by him, so they're, he didn't want to present them as fake, certainly. So they, I think they're done out of admiration because uh, well, he probably did them after well, what he maybe considered the most important uh, uh, paintings uh, uh, in, its, in the collection of his father. Uh, the copies that are made by watercolor and etchings are a different story because they were probably meant for a manuscript that Dr. Cachet wanted to publish about the, his collection and especially on Van Gogh. So that's the reason why he wanted to, uh, to copy them in, uh, in, in watercolor and afterwards in, in etchings for a book which was never published but that was the intention. So that's the reason why we have so many watercolors and etchings. 
Well, his son eventually carried out this uh, idea of publishing a book, didn't he? Well, yes, he had a manuscript, a type manuscript, which was based on all of the information, uh, I presume, by his father. And also he added a lot, and you'll find all kinds of, well, information about the picture, even sometimes about uh, how many nails he put into uh, 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 the canvas and things like that. Were there any major revelations in this collection of Dr. Gachet when it was put together and uh, brought here? Well, uh, one of the things, we, we really dig into the problem of, of fakes, uh, especially for this one. Uh, and the, the exhibition was made by uh, the Musée d'Orsay, and they, of course, uh, investigated some of the pictures uh, that uh, come from their museum, and we only investigate this picture. And the funny thing is, we if we look upon it, um, backwards uh, from now and seeing the story. I think that one of the reasons why they have doubted this picture is that they had some difficulties with the fact that this is indeed a second version and you can easily look at it if you look at the two versions because this is indeed much more uh, well academic so to say than the first version and uh, because that's a spontaneous version uh, after nature done quickly um, and he corrected here a lot of the well, took away a lot of the spontaneous elements in the first one, and uh, uh, it's also it, it's uh, it's more dark, uh, which is probably uh, intentional because Van Gogh sa says somewhere that in this picture he wanted to express some of the uh, the illness of the patients in uh, in the asylum because that's what we see here, the asylum of Saint Remy, and um, uh, he wanted to express that by red. Uh, um, uh, black noir, he says, and these are the kinds of colors that he used in the trees. So he, the, the trees are rather heavy, and for that reason, the, the picture is even more darker than the first one, and as such, even more darker than most of the pictures he made at the time. And in combination with uh, the, the fact that it is rather well, academic, so to say, a worked out, worked out uh, picture with a very carefully brush stroke, very calculated brush strokes. Um, that means that people didn't like it, and that's for the reason they thought that it was not by him, I think. Now, Van Gogh lived there for only a short period of time, it's my recall, but uh, how was it that Dr. Cachet came out with so many of his paintings? Well, he had 26 in total, and we do not know. Uh, because, ex except for, uh, I think, one picture in the letters and a few stories afterwards, we simply don't know how he got 26. You can suspect that maybe Dr. Cachet bought a few in Auvers sur Oise because he was a genuine, he was genuinely interested in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Van Gogh, and so he might have bought a few here and there who were left in the village. Uh, he might have give, uh, of the CEO might have given him, uh, him a few. We do not know about that. There are stories about that, but you c cannot find the real evidence for that. The, the only thing we know is that in the letters Van Gogh say, says somewhere that he, uh, he uh, it, it, for him it seems reasonable that a doctor should be paid in terms uh, for what he did for him. Uh, and it uh, paid in terms of paintings. So that's one thing. And the other thing, uh, which is very important to realize, I think, is that Dr. Cachet was the first real collector who showed a real interest in Van Gogh. And uh, so here we have this artist who was rather unknown, um, meeting somebody who genuinely liked his art. And this man was uh, had contacts in, in circles uh, of impressionists. He was a well-known figure and um, wanted to have pictures by him. So I think that uh, even, even his brother might have given him quite a few pictures simply to create uh, an environment where people could see pictures by Van Gogh. It, it must, must have been in, uh, in the advantage of the artist. I mean, that's for the same reason they exchanged uh, paintings with other artists, just to, to um, well, create a bigger environment or a larger environment where people can see his works. Now the sun, continued to promote Van Gogh, uh, in fact called him his friend or something, which mm -hmm. has been later debunked, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, how was he uh, figuring in this whole environment? Uh, well, he started uh, to promote uh, the relationship, uh, more or less, uh, of the, uh, the, the, the cachets with, uh, with Van Gogh. Uh, I mean, uh, um, so he... Uh, he wrote about them um, later on and um, kept the, uh, the collection, for a part at least, together. He sold a few pictures, you know, 
uh, or quite a few at least, uh, quite a few uh, even. Uh, but he started, uh, he kept it together, at least uh, important paintings. I have to do this again. Um, uh, he, he, he kept a few paintings and he gave them to the state and he wrote about him. And he was eccentric too because he kept, uh, he didn't like that so many people came to his house and wanted to see the collection. So um, in the beginning I think there were only specialists who were welcome and after a certain time even specialists were not so welcome anymore. And even uh, they were not allowed to take photographs. Well Louis, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to uh, explain this fascinating show about the Hawks first collector. Thank you.